Alright, good evening ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Grumble Duke and we are bringing you, big round of applause please, the Ten very first game in our go. home run, run Dyer's by our guys, pick. Tsunami Cup. This is run by the Wave Gamers. I'm sure you can see what we did there with the name. We're so proud of ourselves. We're so clever. Um, and yeah, this is uh, game one. We've got Big Noise running up against EMF. This is in the East European Division. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this is going to go. Uh, just for anybody who's wondering about the uh, Casters Network icon up at the top, what I'm also doing in this particular match is uh, running Ten my very first Casters trial. This has been organized by Cool Blue over at the Casters Network. Five seconds. Um, and basically this is just a series of Radiance challenges for Casters pick. to uh, try and improve on their skills a little bit. And this first one that I'm doing is the solo challenge. So stick around to see how I do. Rate me. Report me to Cool Blue. Um, so first up we've got the bands very very high tier bands coming out here the only one I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen is Invoker I think he's personally a little bit scarier than Sentel although I did just cast a game in the female Dota 2 league of SEA where Sentel absolutely murdered but there's the Invoker, no big surprise there Lycan and Ember both very um, both very effective hard carries both hard carries who can start being effective a little bit earlier than some others Lycan also having amazing push Ember having possibly the most OP skill in the game in Sleight of Fist and AA being just an amazing support for, for everything and you all know why I'm not going to bore you on that Dazzle definitely one of the highest tier supports in the game at the moment I am looking forward to the bit where I catch up Ten with everything that's happened and I can stop talking go. quite so fast Dazzle though Five definitely one seconds. of the highest tier supports in the game great in a defensive or aggressive tri-lane gives you the option to run a bit of a squishier heavy carry with a bit more insurance in the early game um, tree and protector bang. though offering almost the same kind of thing on a global scale in terms of uh, what living armor can do for protecting a hard carry with a very divey mid like night stalker as well um, that is going to be a very effective way to gank the side lanes and of course Ten Night Stalker seconds I to think go. he'll be fairly good against Invoker as well getting a bit of confirmation here from Gothic Five who's also watching the game um, Night Stalker's abilities when it's night time just become ridiculously OP and Invoker is Radiant all about getting spam. into man fights with people and uh, Night Stalker is gonna, is gonna love that Big Noise choosing to ban out the Abaddon next now it, it, you've got to ask yourself, it, would that be too much for EMF to get the abandoned as well? Certainly they'd have an awful lot of protection going around um, with Aphotic Shield as well as Shallow Grave as well as the, uh, the heals coming out of Dazzle. But it would give them very little lockdown. Personally I see EMF going for something now. They've got their, uh, they've got their healing support, they've go. got their Shallow Grave. Now they're going to go for something which will help them get kills Five or push seconds. rather than something else that's oriented around keeping the carry alive. Um, EMF chooses to ban out the Batrider, certainly synchronizes well with Night Stalker, Radiant would make Big Noise ban. very, very gank heavy. And this is more like it from Big Noise. Banning out the Bristleback, he's the kind of person who might be synced with the Dazzle, um, as possibly an offlane, almost certainly an offlane. Um, you could chuck a Venno in that, and you'd have Ten probably one of the best aggressive tri lanes in the game, in my opinion. For one without any stuns, because um, I don't count Dazzles, who counts Dazzles? Um, that would be a, a very effective pick. trialing. Just going to do a quick little bit of uh, publicity Dyer's stuff for pick. one brief moment. There we go. I've tweeted. Got to love the tweet at Grumble Duke. And uh, EMF picking up the IO now. Now, IO Dazzle, I really, really like that combo. IO does offer a little bit in the way of heals. You're still a little bit down when it comes to stuns. But with the attack speed and the movement speed buff that IO will give to the carry, that is just huge. I'm not anticipating Ten that EMF are going to do what I've been seeing an awful lot in kind of the uh, Russian and Five SEA divisions seconds. of the uh, of the JDL, and that is the IO mid. I think it was Myth I saw do that most, most effectively. Time. Um, and then of course, you know, there's also uh, you can always get Fnatic's trick of uh, IO tiny mid. Gotta love that as well. Um, but it, it opens up some things here. Um, my man who's, who's watching and occasionally sending me messages, Cool Blue might actually tell me that this doesn't count as a solo cast, but I don't care, um, is suggesting that we might be seeing uh, CK or Tiny, one of the kind of classic IO combos. Um, we certainly could. We certainly could. I'm not too Radiant sold on the pick. idea. Um, just because those either work very, very well or they work absolutely terribly. And Big Noise with Treant and Viper and Night Stalker, we are talking about the kind of heroes that you are going to struggle to gank a little bit. Treant will be chucking up living armor all over the place. 
Night Stalker during night time, as I think I believe I just mentioned, very, very OP. And Viper just dishing out huge damage from very, very early in the game. Um, Ten seconds I'm slightly to go. confused by the Viper pickup, so is Gothic. It, it seems like... I mean, one of them has to be going in the side lane. I'm going to anticipate that that's going to be the Viper, but it's going to be strange. Um, we've also got the Naga ban coming out from EMF. Now, I'm not sure that's what Big Noise would have been picking for. The Naga, I think, works best when either in the, you know, when she can be left alone to get a great deal of farm, and I don't think Big Noise really have the uh, the team to give her that space as of yet. Um, Ten or where she's, to go. or where they're going for kind of a more pushing strategy, and uh, I just don't see Five it. Seconds. I do go for the tiny, and I yeah, let, let's do it. This will be fun. Throw the IO, um, do all kinds of crazy things. Get those stuns in. I'm just wondering whether they're going to go full on fanatic, full on no tail style, and uh, we're actually going to see that mid. But uh, I'm thinking not. Invoke has been a very powerful mid recently, and. Although, actually, it would be a nice way to counter the uh, either the Night Stalker or the Viper, whichever one of them goes mid. Both very effective mids. Um, both Radiance of band. a little bit limited effectiveness. Um, maybe when running up against a dual lane. Viper, depending an awful lot on his initial harass, wearing somebody down, and then Nether Tops and building up the damage buff. Um, and Night Stalker just being all about focusing someone down and ripping them to shreds as soon as, the, uh, seconds soon as the sun goes down. Big Noise choosing to pick up the Venomancer. Five um, seconds. Certainly gives them a decent amount of push. They're also going to have quite a lot of DPS on their team, just uh, you know, gradually Reserve taking damage time. over time. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be enough, though. I mean, there'll be Forged Spirits, there'll be uh, Dazzle healing up, there'll be Shadow Grave, there'll be IO heals. I think they... Uh, I think they need a little bit more right-click. Gothic's in big favor, though. He sees, uh, he sees great synchronicity in what Big Noise is picking up. And uh, I, of course, could be totally wrong. We are missing the big hitter coming out from Big Noise. There's still the heavy carry to get. Maybe it'll all fall into place as soon as that is picked up. I would like to see something to kind of sink in a little bit with the uh, Trian ult and the Veno ult, because they do have quite a bit of AoE crowd control and damage with that. Um, but then you kind of got Night Stalker and Viper who are going to be great for cleanup. But they've got room for a heavy carry here who'd be able to come in on the tree ult and actually just kind of do the damage on top of that. Like maybe a Luna, um, just sort of a very effective Luna play in the last game that I was casting. Um, Doom banned out from EMF. I mean, without a doubt, banned. Doom could have done that. Scorched Earth, not really AoE damage, but he, he certainly works as a carry um, and can pick Radiance up uh, the Aurids, which is going to give his entire team extra damage. It, it could be very, very effective. Um, Wondering whether Big Noise might be thinking about running an aggro try here. Um, Treant, of course, being very able to uh, solo a lane, even a side lane. Um, we could then have Viper, Venomancer, and maybe uh, maybe some tank, maybe some stun up in the aggro. I think the only question is, you know, you tend to run an aggro try when, there's, a, seconds to go. when there's an enemy hard carry that you kind of really want to shut down or that you think you can shut down Five very effectively. Seconds. I'm not sure that that would apply to the IO Tiny, and I'm not even sure that they're going to be there, given that Io Tiny Reserve is actually time. a fairly classic and well-known mid combo. Hmm. Much confusion. Much, much confusion. Um, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But certainly there are some definite heavy farmers in the Invoker and the Tiny, and an aggressive try from Big Noids would certainly mean that they would be shutting somebody good down. Just somebody good. Um... Let's have a quick look ski here. Um, Marana banned out now from EMF. I, I gotta say I do like that that uh, ban. The idea being Io would uh, link to someone, relocate them to the middle Ten of the jungle right near where the uh, to go. the big noise farm carry was going. Then you'd get the moonlight shadow. Five you'd go in seconds. and you would have everything for free, ready to drop. Um, <clears throat> looking at how this is gonna go, um, Darkseer almost certainly will be running the uh, the off lane. In fact, no, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to stick my neck out here. If Big Noise pick up a, uh, a a late game farm carry, I think EMF might actually go aggressive tri lane with the Dazzle, the Tiny, the Io, Darkseer running solo safe, and Invoker mid. But actually they have an awful lot of options on how they choose to do this. There's also Ten the option of running Darkseer mid, go. given that if he runs up against Night Stalker, Night Stalker would have to be coming Five into melee range seconds. and taking uh, and taking Orparas every time he came into last hit. Reserve time. 
I really want to see what this last carry is going to be. Um, and then, and it's the life stealer. I mean, there's a great deal of magic damage that's going to be coming out of EMF. No obvious massive right clicker other than Tiny once he gets all of his feet up. Um, this is going to be an interesting game. This is going to be an interesting game. And um, I don't know these teams too well yet, obviously. This is an you know, amateur tournament for, for new friends. But I do know that P-Fanner is, going to be, is, the, uh, is the captain there. He's going to be taking the, uh, the heavy carry, leading from the front. Cloudy, as far as I know, is the captain of EMF. And uh, he's going to be taking the Dazzle. So uh, we're seeing very different captaincy styles here. For anybody who plays Warhammer, this is probably more uh, Ogre Kingdoms. This is probably a little bit more Skaven. Um, for anybody who doesn't get that reference, just 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 devote five years of your life to learning Warhammer, and, and maybe you will. Maybe you will. We are going in now. I'm just going to do a double quick check on the stream quality, etc. Make sure that everything's okay. Just while the game is paused, and I can get away with it a little bit. Um, also, going to pop this up because I do have a hundred subscriber giveaway. If you subscribe down below, there's a chance to win some mythical items, mythical couriers, and the like. Um, and I would uh, greatly appreciate the support as well. Getting down to uh, actually, I'm I'm not going to introduce the teams until we get into um, until they start moving out of the fountain a little bit. Otherwise, people tend to get a little bit of motion sickness. What I will do though is nip around and uh, nip around and uh, message. Uh, sorry, have a look at the items on all of these heroes. I'm never afraid to give out my Twitch link. Um, and I will be getting into the introductions in one sec, just got to sort out. Okay, so uh, moving down to introduce the uh, EMF teams first of all. Nice life stealer set. We'll get back to you. Um, first of all, on the Dazzle, we have Cloudy, as mentioned before, leading from the front or the back, possibly in this case. On the Invoker, we have. Uh, I'm going to go with God there. Um, certainly hoping to pull off some magic mighty tricks. Mighty magic tricks? One of the two. We have Beaker here on the Darks here with a pretty nice hat. On the Tiny, we have High Sprite. On the Io, we have Le Fleur. Then looking at the uh, looking at the big noise team, we have Entropy rocking out on the tree end. On the Venomancer, we've got uh, Bloody, who's actually going to be a stand in here. Um, certainly a ranged though, so I've got no doubt that he's practiced with this team. We've got P Fanner, the team captain, leading from the front. On the Viper, we have Sar, and on the Night Stalker, we have four aliens. Now I am very very interested in having a look at how the uh, how the laning is going to be here. Looks like we are going to have Sar mid. I'm a little sad. Um, I said it's not going to be the Night Stalker, but that's probably the safest idea. And uh, they're going to be running up. It's it's real, ladies and gentlemen. And it's tiny IO Let's mid get this EMF. Over with. They uh, they think they're fanatic. Can they pull it off? I'm really looking forward to this nice aggressive warding coming out from Entropy and Four Aliens. So are down on the uh, off lane. It looks like an off lane combo <laughs> of uh, Triant and and Night Stalker. Haven't seen it before. Very very curious. The obvious downside, of course, is double melee. But there's a decent chance of doing a huge amount of damage there on that lane as well. Up on the top lane, P Fanner looks to be rocking up with uh, probably a Veno support against a. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Well, it is the solo Darkseer. Now, Darkseer is great for shutting down melee carries because, of course, you know to get into last hit range, you've got to start taking all this nonsense. Life Stealer, being Life Stealer, is able to steal back some of that and uh, survive a little bit of it, a little bit better than others. And actually get in range for denies and things like that as well, which is uh, really what you want to be getting against Darks here. He's very good at just sapping away at XP, very good at sapping away at gold, and uh, shutting him down. Really very, very critical. Um, now Viper is a very hard mid to counter. Not impossible, far from, far from impossible, but not the easiest. And I really like the fact that they're mixing it up and doing something a little bit different here to, uh, to, to secure those kills. I'm really hoping we're going to see excellent relocates coming out from that IO. That's kind of going to be the, uh, the key point, I think, here. Um, also, kind of needs to be tethering, if only to use up his own mana so that he can uh, clarity up or bottle up once it comes out and uh, get the mana up on this 
on this tiny as well. Um, lots of aggression coming out from on the bot lane from the uh, double melee lane. They're actually running up against double range, which is going to be really, really tricky for them. Um, Denied. Entropy now taking an increasing amounts of harass. I'm just wondering if they're going to be able to get the levels they need to dive before they just Methinks straight up die from that. harass. Fingers crossed for that, though. Um, we do have IO. This is the other advantage to a dual mid, of course. You get much better room control. We've got IO moving down right now. He's going to find a regen rune. Got to be a bit sad. That's not really what he wanted. Um, picks it up. Got his spirit surrounding him. So uh, gets a little bit of mana off. A little bit of mana regen off. Dark's here doing a nice job getting a side pull off here. I'm not entirely sure how uh, how big noise allowed him to do that. Probably should have been a little bit quicker putting the creeps onto their own wave or similar. And there's a double stack here as well. But Veno manages to get a decent kill there on the giant, on the, uh, giant wild wing. And that's got to hurt a little bit for uh, for Darks here. He needs that gold. Um, last it's denies. Life stealer way way up ahead. As I said, not shut down too much by the uh, illusory orb. I think that was an excellent pickup for them after the uh, after the Darks here pickup was secured by EMF for the off lane. I mean, P Fan, you, you are going to end up taking harass. I mean, it's also not an ideal lane for life stealer, but it's 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 a lane where a very good off laner goes up against a very good safe laner and neither of them are really happy. So uh, interesting things are going to happen there. Um, down on this bot lane, Invoker not getting the best of the last hits but actually beating out the tree and, and the Night Stalker. Um, That's not right. Dazzle the zero for two though. If you, What's quite interesting, oh Night Stalker's actually just overtaken and this really, they cannot afford it. They cannot be affording this. Double range against double melee. They need to be winning this lane handily. If if it comes down to uh, oh well that was a little bit close, that's just unforgivable. Um, we're also seeing a Quas Exhort Invoker. Um, now, gotta wonder why we haven't seen Cold Snap. I mean, he's sitting on 400 mana, ha having not cast a spell for the entire game. Cold Snap, please. Dark There's Cold light. Snap interrupting four aliens' attacks. He's still got Sunstrike as well, unneeded. Now they can have a couple of hits on Entropy. Sunstrike used just as Entropy decides to back out. I think that was probably a little bit. Um, probably should have saved that to uh, hit him on the retreat, maybe after getting some damage in, and it was a little bit more predictable to see where he was going. Um, but yeah, I, I, I suppose I get it. He was saving all of his mana for one big, uh, one big nuke there, and they actually managed to kill Night Stalker just before the first night as well. He is coming back now with full health and full mana. Um, You'll know so in a way, that might work in his favour if he can secure a kill fairly quickly here. Um, last hits on the mid, Viper being not shut down at all really by Dyer's Tiny. They're leading out on the mid at 1716. Um, oh, Mr. Darkseer kill on uh, on the Venomance at top. That's gonna hurt a little bit. Darkseer should not be able to pull off kills in his lane and uh, I mean, Lifestealer. He's gonna have free farm here for as long as it takes Darkseer to get back in the lane. Darkseer also looking a little bit low. Actually gonna have to go all the way back to the fountain. Um, so good, excellent play there from Darkseer. Have to wonder though, is this possibly even better for Life Stealer? He's got total free farm here for about a minute. That could be 500 gold for him. Rock that against the cost of the support dying. I'm I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure who who wins in this situation. It's night time, and Night Stalker wants it. Attacked. He wants it so bad. Not so oh, but the fast. shallow grave is used just as Invoker gets under tower range, and that's gonna. Neutralize Night Stalker a little bit for now. He's still got two and a half minutes left on the night time though. So don't rule him out just yet, folks. Don't rule him out just yet. The place where I'm surprised we haven't seen killed is mid. I'm really impressed at Zara managing to uh anticipate and neutralize what what's going on here from High Sprite in the floor. The downside of course to the dual mid is you oh, don't no, get the uh, you don't get the structures. levels on your mid. And Viper's not really someone you want to be running up against if uh, he's got a level advantage Radiance on you. Bottom tower is it also means siege. that they're not gonna get their relocate for for a little bit longer. That's one of the advantages to the uh, IO mid strategy. And we've got a big, big push coming down on bottom. Um, Dazzle, unfortunately, going to get finished up. But we do have Invoker coming in straight behind. There's a cold snap down. Entropy in real trouble. He's going to get finished. Four aliens also getting very, very low with the four spirit hits as well. It's going to be enough. There was a quick attempt at a salve there, but beautiful job from God on the Invoker. That's going to secure two kills. Four for one lead for uh, the EMF right at the very start. And up on top, we've got uh, Life Stealer actually being brought very, very low by Darkseer, who's in effect winning a lane. 
as an absentee offlaner, which is just insane. Forcing a TP up here from life from Night Stalker now. Wow, that's the offlane carry. Beaker should have been out there way quicker given the potential for silence. Um, and probably going to fall for that. I think the minute he saw that TP and noticed that it was a brown in colour, he should have been out like a light. Entropy now taking an awful lot of harass, going down again, this time to the dazzle. Um, I don't want to be right. Night Stalker not picking up his ulti. Um, if he can get it in the next minute, that won't make too much of a difference. Um, really gross Night Stalker attacked. face right now. Really, really gross. I guess that's just night time. Um, but yeah, we, we are almost at the end of the siege. second night, and uh, Night Stalker here. No ulti. Gotta be a little bit sad. Um, Life Stealer picking up his hand of Midas, that's attack. gonna help him hugely. It's I mean, he needs something fine. to help him come back into this game. Trust me, I'm a supercomputer um, and I barely understand what's happening. He needs right to be now. carrying for his team here. Lots of action heading on down bot. Four aliens get largely picked up. The cold snap doing so much, so much work there. Cloudy is gonna be coming in and manages to TP out. I mean, he's still got the DPS in. I think there might even be a Viper orb winging its way across the map. Um, but that won't be enough to kill. That's, that's a safe Cloudy. Oh no, it looks like the Viper Orb isn't global. I'm kind of sad about that. That would have been kind of cool. Um, I want to see a few more orbs up here getting damage on P-Fana. Vacuum down as well. Jeez, Beaker just being so aggressive. I love this Darkseer here. No, getting a couple of hits in the tower. And I mean, actually, that tower's on half health. That's huge. Um, Tiny has six. Io on five. Oh, still needs 500 XP. As soon as that hits, though. Radiance That's the point at which uh, EMF are going to be looking to turn their early game advantage a into a, a mid-game stop. How are you doing otherwise? Darks here again up on top, getting a nice surge off on the uh, on the creep that had the iron shell on. Fortunately, the creep is being creep blocked by creep, which is just sad. Poor Darks here. Beaker deserves all the kills, I think. I mean, this is just insane. This is damn carries here. Still hasn't got gone for the uh, ult, and to be honest, I'm not actually a huge fan of this. Gets a kill on Venom with a nice vacuum to interrupt the uh, nice vacuum to interrupt there, and now wants to kind of go on P fan. He's got vacuum again. He can pull him back. Oh no, vacuum wasted as uh, as Rage has popped, and Beaker now looking very very low. Dyer's Gets a surge off. Going to be taking quite a lot of harass. Needs to be very, very clever here. Does have a TP. Just needs to surge away far enough to be able to get out. And I did miss a couple of Invoker kills Dyer's down there, but as I said, I really think attack. Beaker deserves the attention Bad so far news in this for match. You fans of towers out there. Whee! Much talking. Such wow. Tiny now. 52. Invoker 39. Lifestealer 34. Viper 29. EMF are definitely getting the better of the farm here, and that's not even counting just the uh, Dyer's bottom tower is under the excessive siege. kills they've managed to get. Um, Dyer's four aliens now, getting fallen. the dazzle. DPS cold snap is up as well. He's in trouble. Four spirits are going to get a couple Darkness. of shots off, but dazzle manages to secure the kill. My I mean, there's been a, a scary amount of feeding down here on the on the bot lane where it Do shouldn't wave. really be. And it looks like LeFleur has come in here. He's going to be bringing the dazzle back to mid? No? No. Okay, misread the relocate there. Apologies, guys. Um, Dyer's bottom tower is we do under have Saar and Standard now going for the Radiant Courier. They need one more hit. Radiance they get it with a ward. Good play there from Bloody as Standard. Um, and now a couple attacked. of rotations here. They want to catch out the Cloudy, getting some nice slows on him from Viper, but do they have the team support in here? Not seeing much animation cancelling coming out there from Saar. Maybe, maybe I'm being too picky. Um, but I think he could have got at least another couple of hits on there. Um, let's have a... Something funny is happening in the background here. No ult skill on Dazzle. Um, I really think Weave would be very, very useful in this team. Shut given they're doing a fair amount of right-click damage with Tiny at the moment. And given that they're just up against an Invoker. Uh, sorry, not an Invoker. A Life Stealer. That's uh, not something you want to be doing. Tiny here getting a decent two-person stun. But unfortunately, it's the two slow-slash-poison bastards of the Radiant team. Io's there to try and save him. Getting the heal up. Trying to body block out. Zark getting way overexposed here. will definitely take a fall in exchange for getting that kill. Um, and given that he was the solo mid compared to uh, Tiny being a dual mid, I think that's actually much, much better for EMF. 
Um, now we've got Invoker having to run away from a actually very low life speed, uh, Night Stalker, who ends up coming down. Entropy now getting slowed. He's not going to be able to catch up with Invoker, who pretty soon is either going to have Sunstrike or Cold Snap, which is not necessary. We've got Darkseer coming in as well. And, uh, wow, EMF definitely outplaying here. Let's have a quick look at the XP graph. 5,000 5, XP ahead, 10 minutes into the game. Gold at a similar kind of place. This is getting scary now. If they had uh, double this lead, they would officially be at the stage where uh, the game is pretty much over, where you've got a thousand golden XP lead per minute of a game. That's pretty much over at any stage. Um, now, they're at about half that right now. They could easily get to that stage. Very, very easily. This is a very, very swift game. Um, P Fanner now. Looking to get a little bit more farm on top. I mean, the, the Midas was bold here. In a sense, it's what they need to secure themselves the late game. In a sense, it's really messed them up. Because without early game items, Pfana hasn't been able to uh, contribute much. Whereas the uh, the equivalent, I suppose, on the... Uh, the equivalent would be Invoker for the EMF team. And Invoker has been contributing all over the place. And uh, has, although I say that, he's also bought a Midas. Um, but he can get away with it. They've been winning. Um, like I almost feel that what would have been better there is for Life Stealer to say, well look, they're going for a Midas and they're winning. I've got to try and not go for a Midas and make up the value in uh, utility and to get the team ahead this way. Beaker this time, taking a fair amount of damage, is going to get bloody though just with the orb harass and then a quick right click. If anybody's wondering why the uh, living armor uh, stacks went down so quickly there, it is of course because of the uh, ion shell. He surges himself and then immediately turns around looking for a quick kill as Claudie comes in to give some support. Life Stealer infested in a radiant creep. Oh, meanwhile we do have action going on here as four aliens is going in and getting tiny ioed. You cannot argue with tiny io. Um, Life Stealer must be calling for help here. This is this is a scary place for him to be. The tower is going to be down very very soon. That's not going to offer him any kind of sanctuary. He can't pop out here and just. Oh, apparently he can. He can because he wants to deny. But the living the tree armor comes on at possibly the worst possible time for him to get that deny. And here comes Io Tiny. They want P Fanner. He does not have mana for rage even when it comes to cooldown. The floor though, not someone with a stun. Entropy is now invis sitting next to Dyer's a very small clump of trees and the floor high sprites actually four against two. Um, they relocate out again. Now it looks like uh, Beaker and Cloudy Dyer's are the ones in trouble. Towers. Beaker Dyer's wisely using Surge on the Dazzle destroyed. who kind of needs to help um, and chooses to TP out himself. Beaker definitely man of the match from me here. Um, now we've got God on the Invoker. Dyer's middle tower um, is under attack. He's pushing onto the. Uh, you don't even care, do you? He's pushing onto the mid tower. He's got forged spirits, but they're moving up to deal with the uh, attempted rotation in from the, uh, from the jungle. The tree ult goes down. Attacked. Viper pulled off by uh, by the forged spirits. Now Venno is coming in, trying to do damage. Gets hit by a toss from Tiny, who also manages to just punch Life Speeder down. Tree forced to retreat, and uh, GG looks to be called there by Entropy. This is a very, very swift Dyer's game. First game of the tournament over in 15 attack. minutes. Victory for Radiant. Wow, that was swift. That was very, very swift. Um, I'll be bringing you straight back in with the next lobby, guys, so uh, please do stick around.
All right, good evening, esports fans. Let's get this switched over and watch some Dota. We are coming back now for a uh, for the second game in our brand new self-run Wave Gamers Tsunami Cup. It is EMF against Big Noise in the actual first match of the entire tournament. EMF getting a runaway ban, uh, sorry, getting a runaway win very early on against Big Noise, and now we are coming into the second draft. So. Lycan banned out, Ember Spirit, no big surprise there coming from EMF, they're just banning out the high tier ones. What's slightly more interesting, I think, is that Big Noise instantly doing the respect to Darkseer ban, and how can you blame them? Bika did an amazing Ten job on the offlane there, actually go. getting kills. I mean, just absolutely insane. Um, Gothic makes a point here, we can Radiant assume, spin. given that he uh, seems to be a highly skilled offlane player, that that Centaur is going to be Bika as well. I'm expecting an early blink. Possibly even uh, off brown boots. Yeah, I'm thinking it'll be brown boots blink, Dyer's given the way that he was playing that Darkseer. And he is going to be working that like nobody's business. Um, Ancient Apparition and Viper picked up by uh, by the Big Noise crew. Now, both very good heroes, no doubt about that. I've been uh, saying Viper was, was tier 1 long before the pros started playing him. But here's my th thinking. we They also used their... Uh, their brief moment of having two hero Ten picks one after the other to, to uh, pick up AA and Viper and I'm wondering if they're planning on comboing Five them. Seconds. I mean when you think about it what Viper really benefits from is any kind of harass that gets people low because Nether Toxin Reserve gives extra time. damage um, for the amount of health missing, missing on the enemy. Now add chilling touch to that I think that could be really effective. Dirty Viper's not one of those heroes who really depends too much on attack speed. He's not relying on something to proc like a crit or a uh, or a Mjolnir or something like that. He just wants to get them down low. So put Chilling Touch on him, get the early harass off, and then, you know, two or three minutes down the line, Chilling Touch can wear off and Brilliant Viper can go in and get kills down. easily. Um, the Dazzle picked up again for EMF. Really liking that play. Really, really liking it. I think uh, they were doing it very well last time. Certainly saved, uh, saved them from Big Noise getting some decent farm up. And if they can pull the same thing off in this game, there is no reason why the same thing won't happen. Um, also, Dazzle Centaur could be the makings of a very effective aggressive tri lane. I doubt they'll run that, depending unless uh, Big Noise has a very farm dependent safe lane carry that needs to be uh, to fed up to the trees. Big Noise banning out the uh, the Tinker, obviously afraid of the potential push coming out from EMF, and I think that might be a wise move. Um, EMF choosing to then go for the kind of ganky. Uh, Seconds to Dispositionment. Go. That's a that's a new word. What I mean is they're Five going for a uh, ganky seconds. heroes who can affect their own positioning. So Batrider, of course, being able to draw somebody Reserve out very time. very easily. Invoker's Tornado being a great setup for many kinds of uh, AOE team fight, including AA's ult. Um, but I got to say, I'm really liking the look of this EMF team, really Centaur and Dazzle, it. just being so effective early game. They certainly managed to. Uh, have the first game over very very quickly so they're going to be looking to do the same in the second so I would be surprised if EMF picks up any really really hard feeders now I'm not talking about heroes who don't benefit from a lot of feed I'm sure there'll be some of them I'm talking about heroes who need a lot of feed we won't be seeing a void we won't be seeing uh, I doubt we'll see a spectre or anything else Ten like that we'll see something else that can come go. online fairly early and kick some face in Five Big Noise choosing to take out the Visage. I do think that would have been a, a very effective tri lane. Dazzle Visage, you've got the nuke. But Reserve again, time. there's no stuns. Like, have we had any stun support so far in this game? Um, Big Noise choosing for the nice Slark. Game. I mean, I, I rate this hero a lot higher than other people seem to. I'm surprised he's not banned out almost with the frequency of Lycan. 
Um, he's a little bit hard to know where to lane sometimes, and perhaps not the best hard carry in the game, but uh, certainly a very effective hero for early strats, and I think that's what Big Noise need to counter what EMF are likely to try and pull here. Hmm. So, Ten EMF looking to get their third pick up here. They still need a mid, they still need a support, and they still need an offlane. Uh, sorry, and they still need a farm carry. Um, and they pick up the Slada. I mean, <laughs> they, uh, I said they'd go early. Uh, I said they'd pick up a heavy carry who could do stuff early, but benefit as well from farm. And that, that Slada, they've got two of the best early stuns in the game in Slithering Crush and uh, Hoof Stomp. That is an insane amount of AoE stun. I mean, I'm actually just thinking about this. This is ridiculous. It's, it's they're the kind of stuns. It's kind of tricky to get Ten into range for them. Like EMF to need to pick up some slows or some relocates or a disruptor Five maybe to get seconds. a glimpse. Um, but wow, if they can land centaur into if they Reserve like, it, it's unlikely. But just picture it. If you get a centaur stomp, say it hits two people, easy as pie then to land the next slardor stomp. Um, I'm just going to call them both stomps or crushes. I'm, I'm like I'm not going to differentiate too much between those two moves this game guys I, I must freely admit that because I think they're going to be used one after the other fairly interchangeably um, Centaur and Slada are both going to have blinks and in effect that is going to be something like five seconds of solid stun that EMF can pull off from a distance uh, given the blink daggers and that's going to be huge that's going to give uh, Weave a great deal of time to uh, tick over increasing the armor difference between the teams and I think Big Noise are realizing just what they're letting themselves into Dyer's here. Pin. Nyx, uh, they pick up the Nyx. Now, first of all, I, I'm not a huge fan of Nyx compared to other people. I think what they're probably going for here is Spike Carapace, which is an amazing way of countering some uh, some sudden initiations there. What I don't like about it is I don't think it works very well against Centaur and Slardar. If you're going for someone who needs to blink in and then use an ability stand. and it's a little bit slow and it's a little bit paced, then arguably a clutch Nyx would have the time to uh, to activate the Carapace. But against a Centaur and a Slardar, it's just blink stun. Blink stun. He's not going to have time, and he'll be dead before anything else can happen. Um, also, he's running Ten up into major tanks and go. heals. I mean, Abaddon was picked up this time, so we have gone for the Abaddon Five Dazzle that was prevented seconds. last time by the Big Noise ban. But we've got Centaur, massive health pool. Slardar, massive health Reserve pool. Time. Dazzle, shallow grave and heals. Abaddon, aphotic shield and his ult. I mean... I don't think Nyx is who they want to go for here. Nyx is for taking out your squishy mages. Nyx is for taking out AA. Um, I do not see how they're going to make this work. Dying it also means that they must be running... Uh, it, it's going to be... Okay, running with it here. Nyx off lane, Viper mid, Slark safe lane with an AA support. Mm. Mm, not sure about this. Really, Ten really not sure about this. Hoping the big noise are going to prove me wrong. I'm always interested to learn new things and be proved Five totally wrong. It's seconds. a lot more fun than being totally right. Um, EMF now choosing to ban out the uh, the OD. I can kind of see that. I suppose Nick could be running a support, perhaps with the with the AA. Um, that would be a fairly effective lane, I suppose. It would uh, certainly help Slark land his pounces. Um, and actually, the OD seems to have given uh, a bit of pause there for Big Noise. Yeah, I think I think that might have been an excellent ban there from EMF. Ten so not the Nyx off lane, Slark off lane. Um, oh, no, I'm, I'm just confused. Just, just let me be for a while, guys. Let me be for a while. The uh, the Slark and the Nyx have kind of thrown me a little bit. Not Reserve heroes. Time. I would have liked to see in this uh, in this lineup. But say lovey, Slark is going to have the uh, one great as one great element with essence shit shift, um, draining the strength of strength dependent heroes is a very effective way to get them killable early, particularly when you're running up against a viper. Uh, sorry, when you're running with a viper. Um, but if they were going to do that, I would have rather seen a Timbersaur and I'm dying, and then a different pickup from the next. That would have been my preference. So Magnus mid. I want to say, with a maybe Slark's. In fact, maybe Slark safe AA Viper Nyx aggressive try, or it could be Slark off lane and an AA Viper Nyx defensive try. But I think that's probably the way those lanes are going to work out in the end. 
I would be very surprised as well if EMF weren't going to run Abaddon and Dazzle as uh, the co-supports in a tri-lane, just because it offers up so much in terms of dive potential, and uh, with Slardar or Centaur, I'm assuming it's going to be Slardar, that is going to be a, uh, a very effective dive combo. Um, the Razor Ban is, uh, is certainly well targeted, given that EMF need to pick up their mid. Um, not sure if that's what they would have gone for. I think they need a little bit more range. Razor's range not being too great. Okay, his, uh, his circle thing is a, a fairly decent way of, uh, of getting some range and uh, some harass from a distance, but uh, not what I would have been going for. They are going to need someone with a little bit more tank than a, than a typical glass cannon, though. Um, with the next assassin around, anybody like a sniper or a drow, who I haven't seen picked up on a pro game in a long time, um, they would just get squished very, very easily. Um, as well as actually just the shockwave for Astra Magnus in the early game would be very, very telling. Um, it's a little bit tricky to, to, to say what EMF are going to be picking up here, but it's got to have range and it's got to have a bit of tank. That's, uh, that's my two cents on this. Um, I'm also wondering whether we're going to be seeing uh, P-Fanner picking up the uh, the heavy carry again and Cloudy running on the support. Fingers crossed we will. Um, EMF running it right down and they're going for the Shadow Fiend. I was wondering about that. It does give them the range. Um, it certainly would will be nice to drop uh, Shadow Razors and uh, whatever his ridiculous ult is called. It's got some silly name. Requiem of Souls. Yeah, there it is. If you can get the Centaur and the Slardar stuns and then you just walk in the middle of it and do Requiem of Souls and then you could almost intentionally die at that stage and you get a team wipe. Um, we are seeing uh, P-Fanner is running on the Viper, so he's not going for the safe lane carry this time. Uh, Bloody running on the Nyx Assassin. Cloudy is taking the Dazzle again. So that's uh, two games in a row, Dazzle for him. Um, can't really blame him for doing it again second time round, given how well it went the first time. But uh, let's see if they can pull off a victory here. They've certainly got an early game team. Um, Quick pause coming out from Dazzle. Oh, and to stop those weird pinging noises, I just need to adjust my USBs because apparently my computer is falling apart a little bit. Just a little bit though. Just a little bit. Kind of on the side. Going to have a quick look at the, uh, at the uh, chat. Here we go. Poison touch, into stomp, into crush. Um, Naracle, I, I kind of agree. Oh, LTI, hiding your name there. I know it's you. I kind of agree. I just I don't think Centaur and, and Slardar are going to be laning together. That's certainly the combo for when they group up in team fight, though. Fingers crossed. Fingers firmly crossed. Um, working on the assumption, I am also admin of this game as well, so I suppose I should be keeping quite a close eye on these guys, and big shout out to these teams for uh, for finding us really, it was uh, our first real attempt at getting a, uh, a tournament running, and we had very very decent responses even in the first week, I'm not sure whether these guys found us on, on Reddit or, or from watching our streams, but um, thanks for coming guys when you're watching this back, I, we really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> here's, here's my secret analysis of what's going to happen in the Wave tournament, we've entered three teams, um, we've got Wave Int, Wave A and Wave B. I don't really want us to win. I think it would look a bit weird if the tournament organizers won the tournament. But I don't think... I, I think we're going to have great fun. Let me put it that way. I think we're going to have so much fun in this tournament. And I think we're going to learn a lot. And if the subtext isn't enough for anybody out there, I don't think we're going to win. Um, but it is going to be a great fun tournament. And uh, great exposure for all these teams as well. I'm going to, from this point on, be trying to get as many casters as I can interested as well. Um, really hoping to get uh, multiple language casts up that would be that would be magic um, it will happen it will happen still waiting on this not getting messaged by captains am I? nope much strange such wow um,
unsurprisingly. Um, yeah, they, they got there just before I did. Uh, unsurprisingly, we are seeing Beaker, the offlaner, running on the centaur. Um, Cap having some troubles. Well, that is a dazzle. I mean, my personal preference, I have to say, oh, USB. Well, we're just going to have to hope that doesn't keep being in the whole match. I'm, I don't think it will. Um, you know, sh should the captain play the heavy carry, or should the captain play the support, or should it be somewhere in the middle? I'd be very interested in hearing anyone's comments. I will try and check the Twitch Twitch chat in a sec, see if anybody's had some uh, wonderful insight on that. Personally, I've got to say, I think I like the captain on the support role. That's what we have at Int, uh, with Metamorphosis running the supports. Just because I think the supports kind of need to have a wider eye on what's going on more generally. Like, carries, it's kind of just farm, 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 team fight. Um... Late game carries anyway. It, like the the, the life stealer captain. It, I don't know. It, it's not where I'd want my captain on on a life stealer because he's not going to have any. This is assuming your captain is also not just your drafter. It's also the person who kind of leads you in terms of tactics. Um, but assuming that it is, you don't really want that person to be, uh, you know, solo laning for the first twenty minutes of the game. You want them leading the tri lane. And uh, given that the carry in a tri lane is generally the guy dishing out a lot of the DPS. Um, or certainly trying to focus mostly on trying to get the last hit. It kind of helps when it's just a support. Um, and we are just waiting for Cloud to reconnect. I'm sure everything will be fine in a sec. Um, and everyone's been very polite so far. So I'm sure we'll just keep doing that. And uh, and all will be well. Let's see if I... Uh, <laughs> stay in the trees. Stay in the trees. Indeed. Um, gotta say, tapping my toes a little bit here. I started tapping my fingers about five minutes ago. I moved on to tapping my toes. Um, all right, let's see who's got the prettiest set. You forced me into a fashion show, guys. Very nice carapace here. I can't believe that's only a common item there on the mix. Um, Slark. Interesting Slark. Very kind of 1980s British punk. Kind of colourful though. A little bit of 60s in there as well. This is Yeah, this is kind of punk hippie Slark. Um, yeah, I, I'll give props for that. I think Slark so far is in the lead, but let's go and have a look at what EMF can uh, can bring to the fashion show table. Um, I do see some stuff on a Baden, I think. Yeah, uh, Netherax and uh, the Dark Star. Decent sword. Um, not overall, no, no points for effort there really, you need more items really to win the fashion show, sorry bro. Um, Centaur, I think this might just be boring, plain old Centaur, oh no, he's got a little, he's got a little tail. There it is. And he's got a belt, yeah, I mean like, that's, that's basically just bothered to get dressed this morning though, so no big points there. And Slada, naked, Dazzle. Not naked actually, some nice stuff coming out on the Dazzle. Um, really a big fan of the hat, headdress of the father spirits. Um, got a random little, uh, I'm assuming that this little red glowing dot is supposed to be sitting in the staff there, but you, uh, you do get these funny graphics glitches. There's a, a really funny one with my kunker pipe. So there's meant to be a little, uh, red glowing ball similar to this to make it look like the pipe is lit. Ends up just kind of hovering somewhere over his face, so it kind of looks like his face is on fire. C'est la vie. C'est la vie. Um, just going to see if uh, we can get some news from these guys. I mean, the ping at 74. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I put this on the right server. Captain AFK. Okay, well, no worries. I, to be honest, if it's not tech troubles, I'm not too worried. Tech troubles can absolutely ruin a match, and there's nothing you can do, and you can end up sitting around for uh, for two or three hours and uh, not getting anywhere. At least, everybody, at least if he's just AFK, then at some point he'll come back to his keyboard, and we can all celebrate and be happy. Um... It's it's the tech issues that'll kill you. 
Unfortunately, we've already done the fashion show, so unless we want to go and you know really have a close look at Roshan, there's not an awful, awful, not an awful lot for us to do. Um, starting items? Anyone got any starting items? No, nope, nobody bought any items yet. Can have a look at the uh, shared content that's being brought. We've got a, uh, we've got ah, uh, P Fanner also with the uh, Glados announcer. Good job, my son. That's uh, that's yeah. We know what's cool. Me and P Fanner, all about the Glados announcer. Um, moving down now, having a look at the uh, mega kill announcers. I cannot believe I'd be reduced to this. We have the Storm Spirit, the Axe, the Bastion, and the Defense Grid. Um, I love the way that Valve just constantly and repetitively plug them. Um, like you, yeah, whatever. Yes, Defense Grid, Valve game. Actually, a very good Valve game. Anybody who likes tower defense, um, that's actually probably. I don't know. I'm tempted to say one of the best actual kind of game level um, tower defense that you'll see. Um, and it looks like we're ready to go. Nyx is ready and we're off. Excellent. Alright, so getting ready to introduce the teams, which you generally don't want to do because now that you've got... Well, well, you don't want to do while they're still all in the fountain because we've got this fancy new uh, showcase mode now and it's better to do that when people are a little bit more spread out, otherwise everybody gets car sick. Um, so first of all, having a look at the AA. Whoops. Not the Ancient, the AA. There we go. It's being played by Entropy. On the Viper, we have P-Fanner. I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, on the Magnus, we have Tsar. On the Nyx Assassin, we have uh, Bloody, the Stand-In again. They look deadly rocking up here. And there's Slark then. Four aliens. They are rocking up into the uh, into the off lane. Possibly, I wanted to say just going for some aggressive warding, but actually they're looking to gank. Um, I'm going to come out of uh, Showcase Mood now. Get onto the, uh, the Dire introductions in a sec, because I think we might see First Blood. Um, LeFleur gets spotted. The leap not quite enough to catch him. If that had been maybe 20 bad. distance further, that would have been the easiest kill in the world. And LeFleur now just kind of watching from a distance, just like, holy crap, I cannot believe how lucky I am. Um, and uh, there we see BG now looking to, uh, to back out a little bit. So, I can get back on to uh, introducing the Dire team. First of all, on Dazzle, we've got the uh, Cloudy there. On the Shadow Fiends, uh, probably Rockin' Mid. Yep, Rockin' Mid, we've got God. On the Abaddon, we've got LaFleur. Lucky escape from him there. On the Centaur, we've got Beaker. Really looking forward to watching his offlane, seeing if he can do what he was doing with Darks here last game. And finally, on the Slada, going to be rocking it with the Dazzle and the Abaddon. We have High Sprite. So, quick drop out of showcase mode. Uh, defensive tribe and uh, with the Centaur offlane being run by uh, being run by EMP. No big surprise there. And it is the aggressive tri lane coming out from BG. Now, this is. I was wondering if we were going to see this. It's going to be bloody up here, but you don't really want to run an aggressive tri lane into either. It's, to be honest, you don't want to run an aggressive tri lane into any of these heroes. You don't want to run it into a Baden. You don't want to run it into Dazzle, and you don't want to run it into uh, into Slada. This is. Uh, this is huge. Um, Beaker picking up a haste rune as well, probably going to be able to dominate the last hits over on that off lane for at least the first little bit. Yep, Slark on 0 for 0. He's on 4 for 1. So that was a very good... Uh, he got every single last hit in that first wave and a deny. Um, now, I'm, i got to say, not a huge fan of this aggressive tri lane coming out from BG. Really not a fan. It just seems a little bit, ah, a little bit forced, a little bit dangerous, a little bit like they felt like they needed to mix it up and did it. I mean, going into Dazzle and Abaddon, the danger there is just even when you get close to a kill, and kills are what you're trying to go for here, even when you get close to a kill, there are two pretty much instant cast abilities which make someone totally immune to damage, in either in certain circumstances or for a certain duration. And I mean, that is huge. Sideful here going off from Radiant is just going to be easily contested. This is actually going to end up in more denials here for the Dyer than uh, it would otherwise. Oh no, it's not, as uh, these creeps are pulled under the tower. I thought they wouldn't be. Um, Nyx gets a decent bit of uh, stun off there. Weird orange effect comes up in the map. Not sure if that was a result of uh, Impale or some glitch or some new thing, but it looked pretty cool. Um, do we have... 
nope, that doesn't do anything uh, fancy. Very strange, very, very strange. Um, Abaddon here is going for the pull. The sentry ward failing to... Uh, oh, I see, the sentry ward was set up to de-ward, but it was never warded in the first place. Um, quick point for anybody who doesn't know the uh, this fairly minor point. If you have a tri-lane and you are defensive, you generally and one of them is a melee or has shorter range, you generally want the one with shorter range doing the uh, side pulling here. What I'm not liking is the uh, the total lack of chain pulling, but of course that is impossible now after the uh, the camp down here was side pulled and farmed out earlier. Um, farm now under the tower, Centaur, wow, Centaur actually leading the last hits. I mean we said last game, Beaker, MVP, definitely doing a great job and uh, he's holding up for that in this as well. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really impressed at him here. Slark on nine for zero, not having the worst time either. I mean, this is a, a double melee lane, and um, he's actually missing a missing a last hit there that I think he should have got. So so he's terrible now. I no longer love him. God, Beaker, God, um, much joke. Um, quick little double edge there nets him three ranged creep kills. Excellent play there by him. Um, and four aliens actually going to be spotted out. Taking a little bit of creeper ass. Um, wondering what the uh, skill build is going to be here on Centaur. Going for double edge first. Very, very wise. Um, means that four aliens is constantly at threat of a nuke. But he does want to be picking up uh, some kind of magic resistance item as soon as possible. High sprite on the slardar. Getting first blood up top. Apologies for missing that. And uh, this is actually them doing the aggressive trick. Um, goes in. Gets an immediate TP out from Pfanner, who is not the person that they wanted to die. Um, carry in that lane. Um, getting some nice harass now off on high sprite. What's he skilling? Yeah, he's skilling correctly. And Slark kills Centaur as Centaur kills Slark down bot. Apologies, guys. That looked bloody. Just caught the blood stain. Um, Minimap awareness will be my uh, my new pro because I don't want to miss kills uh, four and five after missing one, two, attacked. and three. Um, so I'm going to easily pick up this rune, looking now to mainly just get away and make sure he can secure the uh, the bottle regen without taking too much harass. And now running into Beaker, this is not good. He definitely ran the wrong way here, but he's got the charge to get up and over the cliff. He's going to be fine. Get some nice harass on God as well on the way out. So actually the mid's brought down to about the same level, and we have four aliens looking to run up and get a quick gank here. He wants to go into the Roche pit and go for the leap from there, but then decides not to because he's already been spotted out. He wants to go back behind the tower. There's a bottle there if he wants to just try and leap in and deny it. He does. Get the bottle, Broham. Oh no, get the Shadow Fiend, I guess. The uh, the courier picks up the bottle. I think he could have just right-clicked that in the meantime. Um, high Sprite's now being brought really, really low. But yeah, they're, they're just so defensive here. They've also got the other heal coming out from Abaddon, and I don't think there should be kills coming out for BG on the top lane but this game certainly much more even um, much more even than the uh, than the previous one at this early stage of the game um, we've got Shadowfiend now TPing mid gonna be taking over again from the floor who was just babysitting after his uh, after Shadowfiend's brief and unenviable demise um, at the same time though this is kinda of the time when the wave needs to be being pulled constantly I'm not sure whether Abaddon should just have headed up there you can see it's pushed right up here. It's very, very difficult for Slardar to get farm. It's really just letting Viper catch up. And Viper will catch up if you give him half a chance. He's very good at last hitting once you get a few more points in Nether Talks in. Um, the point in Corrosive Skin here, definitely a good shot. I mean, it's going to be an aggressive lane. You are going to be taking hits, um, especially with amp damage. Once that gets out, the entire point is, you know, you get amp damage out and then you hit things. Um, lots of competing here for the last hits on the Tasty Creeps. Lots and lots of competition. Um, meanwhile, the pull camp is again not pulled by EMF. Not entirely sure why on that one. Shadowfiend bottling an Invis rune. Hasn't used it yet, but uh, maybe wants to go on this Zar. Uh... Zar still not level 6. Oh, he just got it. That's RP up now. Um, doesn't have the mana for it though. Might need to retreat. High Sprite. Getting in there, getting decent damage on, but gonna get stun locked and murdered. Um, wow, I mean, this is. He came in there to try and save the supports. The supports, A, probably not worth saving, and B, it's their job to keep him alive. Um, Ping's coming out there from Dazzle. Um, not sure why, but c'est la vie. 
Um, I think possibly saying don't go in there and try and save us, you crazy fool, we're just supports. Um, but I don't know these guys, so uh, maybe they have a different accent. Let's try and top then. Um, I want to say not doing what it really wants to be doing. Slardar has now dropped down to fourth in the last hitch chart, which is kind of awful. Kind of, kind of awful. Um, Viper and Centaur, uh, sorry, SF and Centaur are really the only hopes right now for BG. Like, is under siege. this, the, what, what is this? Like, you you need to be keeping some safe farm here for the Slardar, otherwise he is just going to not farm at all, all game, and that will be awful. Like, I get that there's this confusing stuff going on over at the side here, but that's no cause to get distracted. Um... Bottom Especially if Slardar isn't getting the actual farm off it. I mean, Abaddon can't do a huge amount of gold. I'm not saying it's bad on him, obviously, but it's not like, oh, Abaddon, quick, better get all the farm. Um, and two very low heroes should probably go and retreat here. But uh, actually, they've got a they've got a healer coming in. Oh, I thought I saw the Abaddon. Nope, I guess not. Um, oh, of course, Abaddon is on dire. Durr, grumble. Um, Shadow Fiend now heading back up into mid, wanted to get some rages off to finish off this wave, arguably might get in trouble here, but probably not. Um, Magnus, I think at this stage almost certainly just saving up for Blink Dagger now at 1.2k, um, and I think that's an excellent choice. You know, the, the whole point of Magnus is Blink, RP, Charge Back, Shock Wave, in power, right click, and it works really well, so why mess with it? Um, the downside of what's going on right now for uh, for EMF is just the safe lane. I, they've got so many heals. They've got so many ways of of controlling the lane. I mean, they don't have lockdown, and that's that's what's causing them huge, huge problems here. They don't have the lockdown to just safely secure a bit of farming space for Slada. Slada actually wants to go in on the AA. Does manage to land the stomp. There's a heal coming in. Going to be a decent amount of damage from that as well. But high sprite, kind of in trouble here. Dazzle being very, very, uh, sorry, Viper being very, very good at finishing off low heroes. Slark comes in, finishes off the Dazzle, and a nice TP out there from High Sprite. Gonna mean a, gonna mean he's safe. So actually, I would call that a win for EMF. Supports down on either side, but uh, they did manage to force out a TP rotation from Slark. So a little bit of free farm here for Beaker, who is doing the aggressive strategy. This I have seen fail just as often as I've seen it succeed. The idea behind it is you pick up Tranquil Boots, which. Uh, Obviously the, the healing for them breaks if you take any kind of damage. So what you do is you put them down, do a bit of farming, then pick them up again. And that way whatever damage you've taken will not stop the heal effect of the Tranquil Boots. The danger of it is, of course, if there's any enemy hero around, if there's uh, really just anything going on that you're not 100% aware of, they can get denied or picked up by the enemy and you've lost them. That's that's horrific. Four aliens being very very aggressive up on this uh, top lane, but of course he does have his ult. Um, able to evade damage there for a little bit now, possibly in a little bit of trouble. The stampede comes out. There's the crush. Does manage to take out Abaddon just before dying though. Excellent job for that. And uh, two for one Abaddon SF in exchange for uh, in exchange for the solo safe lane Slark. I'm not sure who wins out in that trade, but um, but certainly excellent play there from Slark. Um, if he hadn't managed to secure that last abandon kill, I think that would have been a very, very clear advantage for EMF, just being able to pick him up. Um. <laughs> Somebody's popular being called on the uh, telephone there. I'm going to take the opportunity to try and have a quick look at the Twitch chat. Seems like the, uh, oh, pause again. I think we are ready to go, though. Um, seems like the uh, general consensus in the Twitch chat, and by the general consensus, I, of course, mean Narapo, seems to be with me in the idea that the captain should probably take the support position since the support to the people who need to be concentrating on a uh, wider variety of things, I think was the, uh, the point there, although I'm probably wrong. I normally am when I try and quote something Narapo said. Um, Looks like we've probably got just a push here. They're, they're, they're forgetting subtlety. Um, they are going to be running into Slardar and AA along with Nick's Assassin though, so they need to get out before they go in. In fact, Slark, anticipating them getting out, is actually going to go in here and look for the initiation. Um, AA ult, but there's a Nick stun and that's two down. 
But EMF, I mean, they had they had they basically stomped the first game. This second game seems to be giving them massive, massive trouble. Um, they do though have two heroes who are only really going to come online once the uh, blink daggers get picked up. Blink dagger though first coming out to Magnus Slardar still well 600 Dyer's away from it. Um, and Centaur, where you at, buddy? Where you at, buddy? Centaur actually closer than the uh, safe lane. Safe lane farming high sprite, but that's not a surprise for those who watched the first game until Beaker's Darks here. Um, very aggressive, very highly skilled, and I'm kind of still seeing this as being open. Although Sla Shadow Fiend again getting ganked, this Slark getting fed so quickly, no healing after the AA ult. Aphotic Shield, though, of course, still a, still an effective way to evade damage. Cloudy though does manage to get off his uh, his shallow grave. Four aliens potentially in a little bit of trouble here. There's the aphotic shield. It does burst on four aliens. Cloudy manages to get up a nice salve. They're keeping vision of him. Slardar wants to get a blink. If he can get this, that'll be a. He really wants to get a blink. Um, begging for it, dying for it almost. And now it's just turned into Slark leads Dire team on merry chase round jungle while team takes towers. Dyer's top tower is Such under siege. Sadness. Such very sad. Um, High Sprite now in danger of being caught out again by Dyer's four aliens. Who is just is snowballing here on the Slada? I mean, just playing so effectively. The supports are just. Oh, beautiful initiation there from Central though does manage to finish off the uh, the Slark. Massive play there from Beaker. He does have the uh, the blink up. He's also got one. Could probably pop that and go back in. Dazzle down though. Um, and I mean, I, I gotta say, I'm really surprised. It's it's really nice to see this BG getting great job done on the first game. He gets in and finishes off the Nyx, saves the uh, and gets out the RP. And I don't think he's going to be killed here. He manages to take out the Magnus. Amazing play here from Beaker. Wow. I mean, I was going to say, oh, Magnus isn't going to be able to kill him here. They're not going to be able to, you know, it's just going to be, uh, Beaker's just going to be able to get away. But he actually manages to get the kill. That is huge. Um, I mean, I was going to say it seems like the stomp might just be going the other way here, but Ancient Apparition gets the pick off. Well played. I mean, that is huge. It, it, I want to say that uh, that EMF still have a chance in this game. They they certainly play better in the first game. They because been making some amazing plays. Um, they're kind of just suffering at the moment because Shadowfiend is getting ganked so much. Um, if they can create a little bit of space for him, let him get a bit of farm. Things Dyer's might go very differently late. But that kill on the. Uh, that kill was very unfortunate though, from the AA ult. And Pfana way over aggressive there on the top lane. Um, when I say over aggressive there, by the way, I don't just mean be where he was. It's not that simple. He, it's where he was given that there were no dire heroes on the map, or maybe like one mid Radiant and the rest missing. Um, much, much too over aggressive. Radiant the Glyph is forced out. Um, Shadow Fiend Dyer's sitting on only an extra 10. I was going to say an extra 10 damage. It's not 10 damage, it's uh, 10 souls, 20 damage. Um, and AA gets picked off very, very quickly, but they misjudged it, and uh, SF does get out. Excellent play there. Perfectly timed TP. Slark must be so sad he didn't get that kill. It really was very, very close. LeFleur getting up a decent ward here, given that they want to be pushing on this top tower, apparently. Um, in danger of being caught out here, though, by the Nyx Impale. Possibly could have tried to dodge there, but I think this is probably just going to be a dead LeFleur. Oh, he does have his ult. It's ult TP coming out from the floor. They are really just forcing BG to waste so much time here. Um, it, it's just amazing. Excellent, excellent play. Um, for all these... Oh, no, but Shadowfiend. Shadowfiend, you're not safe. How many times have you died doing things like this? Run away, bro. They have Slark. They have RP. I mean, the only benefit to this is that at least the RP was forced out. But that's not really enough. Um, we've got Centaur here. He's trying to push bot. He's going to be looking for a couple of last hits here. Um, he does now have his magic resistance off, up, so he can be a little bit freer on the double edge. He'll be taking less damage from that himself. Um, under siege. And a TP 
to the mid where they know that Radiant are farming their jungle. Slark misses on a leap, going for Beaker, but gets easily caught out by the stomp. Double edge, double edge, double edge. Any kind of damage here, please. Please don't let this guy get away. The slow comes in, and that must be a dead Slark. Excellent play. Um, I think Beaker could have been a slightly more aggressive there. It's pretty much, I think he could have gone for the stun pretty much as soon as um, the leap missed. That might have made it slightly, uh, slightly neater. But with Slada with his link up as well now, this Nyx is not getting away. Um, does manage to proc up the uh, the Abaddon ult, but that would only really be serious business if uh, if Abaddon was a carry, and he's not. God here getting picked off again, and I gotta say it's definitely playing a little bit overly aggressive here. Um. Last tips denied. I think we're about done with that graph. Going to get the uh, the net worth up, and uh, despite some excellent plays coming out from EMF, we still are having a significant lead on the part of Big Noise. Um, this ward still got about three quarters of its life left, but if they're going to use it to push down that tower, it kind of needs to be now. Um, late game wise, it's kind of hard to say who's got the who's got the uh, the late game here. I'd say that your your big contenders in it are the uh, the Slark. The SF, the Slada, and the Viper. Um, none of them, to my mind, are kind of super late, massive heavy farming carries. Um, if anyone, maybe Shadow Fiend. But Shadow Fiend's a little bit tricky to run as a hard carry because the damage scaling is so dependent on you keeping the damage scaling. Beautiful leap in there from four aliens, but I think Beaker does actually manage to secure the rune. Just amazing play. Just constant amazing play. He's got the haste rune now. He can use that to go back to fountain if he wants, but he actually doesn't. He's going to use it to get up a little bit of farm. Oh, but gets caught out by the Nyx. That's bad. They need Beaker alive. Um, now, we've got the uh, the Dyer moving in here, looking to defend the tier 2. I honestly feel the way they've been playing, they're not doing very well at holding onto towers, and they're liable to just lose heroes doing this. As the RP goes down, the charge pushes them back. Shadow Fiend's going to go down. Wow, three... Three dead. Lafleur with his ulti now off, gonna go down as well. You know, it, it's not that losing a tier two at the stage of the game is okay. It's that you're not gonna be able to save it. And Cloudy calls GG and uh, calls it at again less than 20 minutes in these games. Um, I'm wondering whether that might be more on the basis if they want to get onto the next one and they think they can win it in the best of three, rather than um, Radiance top tower is under attack rather than genuine we cannot win this because I, I do think they could still have won this um, but there we go the uh, the tower goes down the ancient sorry goes down um, rapid DCs from everyone involved I'll get the uh, next lobby up in a sec I'm not sure whether I'm going to be casting and abandoning the next one we'll have to see but either way it will be played and uh, you might need to tune in to, uh, to David to get the next one so see you guys in a very brief flash